And now it's time for Josh. All right. Well, will we get another strong thumbs up? We've got Tribe Called Quest Low End Theory. And in the opening montage, you heard Check the Rhyme. And now you're going to hear Scenario. Okay, Matt, what are the stats on that? So Low End Theory by Tribe Called Quest comes in at number 29 in the 1990s on Best Ever Albums, number 6 in 1991, number 138 of all time, and it is Tribe's highest rated album on Best Ever Albums. It also made Rolling Stones list coming at number 43 of all time, and Tribe Called Quest is ranked number 114 of overall artist rankings on Best Ever Albums. Okay. Um, this album came out September 21st, 1991. Um, a tribe called Quest was formed in Queens, New York City in 1985. The members of the band include Q-Tip, uh, Fife Dog, Ali Shaheed Muhammad, and Jerobi White. Um, we've covered their single, Can I Kick It, off their first album, People's Instinctive Travels and the Paths of Rhythm. They have six total albums. Um, this is their second album. They are classified as rap, but also alternative rap slash hip hop or jazz rap, which I have never listened to another jazz rap album. So I don't know how wide that genre is. Um, influences. There's a lot of influences, um, as, as attested to by Q-Tip himself. Um, <laughs> he heard a lot of blues and gospel and jazz growing up. His dad was a big jazz head. He said he also listened to all types of music growing up um on the radio like he said you know he name checked like pink floyd and led zeppelin as a and stevie wonder and like all and, and many other bands so it was a wide range of music um he said specifically run dmc once he and and uh fife dog heard that that was kind of the be all end all they knew they wanted to to rap um uh, africa mambata also um the jungle brothers who are kind of their um uh, cohort uh you know colleagues and cohort um sly and the family stone parliament um can the, the list kind of goes on and on um similar artists include uh, other members of the native tongues collective like the jungle brothers de la soul queen latifah brand nubian um they were followed by uh, many acts um common jurassic five the roots mostaf talib Kweli, uh pharrell kanye west Kendrick Lamar kind of goes on and on in terms of their their influence. Their highest charting single is uh, is Award Tour off of their follow up album to this Midnight Marauders, their 1996 album Beats Rhymes in Life, as well as their final album in 2016. We got it from here. Thank you for your service. They both reached number one. Um, I say final album because Fife Dog died in uh, March 22nd, 2016, um, eight months before that album was released. Um, due to complications from diabetes. That was a lifelong struggle for him. And um, so I don't think Tribe Called Quest is a band um, or a group without Vive Dog. And fun facts, they helped co-found the Native Tongues Collective of Hip-Hop Artists, known for their positive-minded, good-natured, Afrocentric lyrics and for pioneering the use of eclectic sampling and jazz-influenced beats. Uh, Jerobi appears on the first album, um, and the last album, but in between, he basically left the group to pursue a career in the culinary arts, and um, that's kind of his main thing and interest in life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. Yep. And he was always kind of a more behind-the-scenes guy anyway, um, more of kind of like, I don't know. He he was, He's considered part of the group, but he does he's not like a strong producer in the way Q-Tip is or a rapper like Fife Dog or the DJ like Ali Shaheed Muhammad, so... Uh, low End Theory is produced primarily by Q-Tip, while Ali Shaheed Muhammad provides scratching and co-production. The album uh, received a perfect five mic score from The Source magazine, and their first album was the first rap record to receive a perfect score from that magazine. Dr. Dre said he was inspired to produce The Chronic after hearing this album, and even Questlove's name is inspired by this group. Um, he said that it's his favorite group and they are his Beatles. Um, there is a 2011 documentary called Beats, Rhymes, and Life, The Travels of a Tribe Called Quest, directed by Michael Rappaport. Um, pretty good documentary. Gives a nice overview of the group. Um, 
it is from 2011 so kind of the final part of the story is uh was yet to come it's it's worth watching i think it's not like mind-blowing or anything but um and this has many accolades soft inside is one of the most influential albums in hip-hop history and one of the first to fuse rap with jazz specifically bebop and hard bop so i think john is going first what did you think of low end theory oh yeah i mean this is one of the best rap albums ever like it's fantastic it's the best rap album we've listened to so far and we've started to listen to some really good ones but this takes it to the next level it's mm -hmm. elite level emceeing both in terms of the sound of the emceeing as well as the lyrical content um as you mentioned, it's the native tug stuff, so it's positive uplift with a little bit of horniness, I'd say, is sprinkled all over this album as well, as a theme as well. Uh, the beats are not over the top, but the samples are tasteful. Um, there's two tracks on this in Check the Rhyme and Scenario, which are as formative a hip-hop songs as there are in my life, because it was sort of when rap when I was listening to it growing up went from being just a thing that was party or commercial to like, I realized, Oh, like this could be like high art too. Right. And I hadn't, mm -hmm. I had bits and pieces of it with like Rakim and stuff like that. But this is where I was like, Oh, this, this is something like jazz or high level rock or, you know, like a great singer songwriter. Right. And that, that was sort of my first awareness mm -hmm. of that. I think that while it's got the Afrocentric theme too, it doesn't, it's not a barrier, you know, like you can listen to this outside of that context and get what they're going for, but it also doesn't push you away. It's a very unifying type of sound as well and universal. It can be both universal, but it can also be about themes, you know, within, you know, what the native tongues would talk about as well. But mm -hmm. I, I love the production on this album. I love um the the all as we said before when we when we did uh the single from tribe called quest um just the 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 interplay between q-tip and fife dog both of whom have fantastic tone in their voice is a really strong aspect of a tribe called quest right you know just the the, the lyricism um and i like i like a lot of their songs like the word play like how they how they construct their rhymes as well. Um, it's sort of like their own mythology a little bit is built mm -hmm. into it along with, which is something that a lot of the, the native tongues or like the conscious hip hop artists did, you know, and it goes back even to like Rakim where they, they create their own mythology and wordplay along the way. I know that even influenced people outside of it, like Eminem as well with like the, you know, the inner rhymes and, you know, the, the, you know, the, the creation of themes and then the revisiting of them in either coupled sets or every other line or callbacks along the way. So, um, I, yeah, this is, this is an elite, elite hip hop album. Um, we're going to listen to a lot, so I'm hesitant to, to create like a Mount Rushmore or anything, but if we're talking the transition, you know, if we go into hip hop as eras, like when you do science, right, where there's like, yeah. you know, the Jurassic era and stuff like the, all the different stuff, you've got the early, you know, the, the skeletal area where it was like house parties and disco driven into like era two when you're starting to get the rise of the MC, but it's still very much DJ driven. Now we've got the streamline produced um, more volume of lyrics. Uh, and we're deviating, by the way, too, because this let's make no mistake about this. This is the New York sound right here. This is New York hip hop, right? Like yep. East Coast hip hop. And this is... You know, when we're talking about the early to mid 90s, the dominant sound in East Coast hip hop is this type of uh, native tongue sound. Now, there's other people that add a, an edge, right? Or like a streets element to it. You know, later we get, you know, Biggie to a lesser extent, Jay Z, Nas, and stuff. But all of the idea that you have to be on point and with your wordplay and not over the top beats yeah. the beats just complement it you know you got like mob deep is another one that's coming later and stuff like this is the blueprint you know of what's coming um yeah. and and like we said before there's people like big daddy Cade and rakim that kind of 
laid the foundation for this, but I, 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 the fact that you, you read those quotes, Josh, where people are like, this is my Beatles, this has inspired me and stuff like that. It's not hard to figure that out. And I think listening to this in context, one of the best things we did on this show is when we start doing stuff in order after the mm -hmm. 60s, right? We started doing the 70s because you absolutely can see what built to this, uh, yeah. but also you absolutely can see that this represents a different version of hip hop. And whereas something like Public Enemy shares some DNA with this, they were always going to be too intense slash aggressive right to truly cross over like this takes some of the same themes but puts it in a package that has a commercial appeal without being corny or um overly commercial right yep. so the highest level of thumbs up on an album we've covered but certainly it's i think it's the best hip-hop album we've covered so far what about you matt yeah, I'm with you, John. I love this record. I love Tribe. I love everything. Like, I could pretty much just, you know, echo everything that you just said. Um, it's, I love the incorporation of like the jazz, you know, and I'm not like a huge jazz fan. You know, I, we covered some jazz albums back when we were in the 60s and stuff. And, you know, there are some certain things that I liked more than others as a, as a genre, as, as a whole. It's, there's a there's a lot of barriers to entry, and I'm glad that we covered some. Did things. you take a and history of jazz class, Matt? Back I did. In the day. I did a, take a history of jazz class. Out. It's funny you should mention that, John. Back <laughs> when I was in college, I did take a history of jazz class, and uh, so I've always been fascinated by the genre, albeit uh, you know not one that I've you know gone out and like really delved into like listening to a variety of things. You know, um, I think probably Miles Davis was the one that I was on the biggest kick on for a little bit. Um, but I, I think the fusion of the jazz with with hip hop is an ex is just such an appealing sound to me. I it's there's an auth there's there's a more of an authentic uh, authenticity to me with this type of hip hop than there is with like the hip hop that does uh, sampling of more of pop centered or, or um, soul or R and B or um, uh, rock even you know uh, which is a lot of the artists that we've covered already. You know the samples that we're hearing is, is is a lot of stuff like that, and I think that there's some great stuff that comes out of it. But there's something that's just kind of a little bit more organic with a you know a sound that's got, that's using the horns and and the drums in particular, which seem to me it's almost like they're using an actual drum kit, and and maybe they're not. I don't know if they're actually using a some sort of sampler or some sort of. Uh, you know, electronic, uh, you know, element that that's that's mimicking the sound of the drums, much like Axl Rose using to mimic the the orchestra with you know using the synth to make it sound like an orchestra. But either way, it's it it has an authentic drum sound, which I I really I really enjoy, um, and and they use it throughout the whole album. I mean, this is a really consistent record. I think sometimes yeah. one of my issues with hip hop is in general is that there's the it's hard to find consistency there's some really good songs and then and then there's some songs that are very skippable for me um and i'm, I'm looking forward to actually you know delving more into hip-hop records to see you know if that you know where that really stands out and where that really actually goes away and the, the album becomes like as a whole just like you know a, a uh you know um almost like a like not like a perfect record but just much more consistent and so this record to me is very consistent um it's got a great melding of all of the sounds that you want to hear with not just the the music that i was just talking about but i love 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 the voice of q-tip in particular and i also like five dogs flow i mean it's just another cool record right we just covered massive attack that this is a cool sounding record and the production yeah. here is kind of got like you know, more of a, of a muted, you know, kind of, uh, sound that just is, it's just a cool sounding record. It's kind of, a, it's another, to me, it's more, I could listen to this in, in, in a variety of different, you know, places and times, but the, to me, this is a more, this is a better night record. Um, it's just got that night, nighttime vibe, uh, vibe to it. Um, and it just it sounds great and then it, you know it, it i the way it at the beginning excursions with that like acoustic the, the double bass is just a great, it's a great opening opening uh bass line with and then q-tip comes in and then they start the drum kick and it's like man man you're feeling it right away you know um yep. and uh and and a lot of this stuff is not it's not really in your face it's kind of more background they're they're right. they are more um 
reserved, right? It's not like this this boisterous boom, look at me kind of thing. It's kind of like laid back, chill. Uh, we're just going to let the music talk for itself and just be, we're just cool with being, you know, it, you know, a little bit in the background. So uh, there's just, I, I just dig the vibe that's happening here. And I love how it ends. I think scenario is probably more, that that probably is a little bit yep. more in a, of a tr more traditional uh, yeah. hip hop song. It's got, it's maybe less of the jazz vibe to it. It, 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 it also know. has, if not the best line in hip hop history, one of the top three with bust a nut inside your eye to show you where I come from, which is, I don't know if you can write a better lyric than that. It's like nearly perfect. So yeah. yeah. I, I, and they got Busta Rhymes in there, which I yeah, love. I mean, he's by him. Yeah. yeah, and he's and he's like a very different rapper than than Q Tip, yeah. right? In Fife Dog, he's kind of so. I, so having said all what I just said about the overall vibe of the record, I do like that that last kind of incorporation, that little ah, uh, just to keep you know, just a little, you know, to keep you you know, throw a little curveball at you and come at you with a little bit of a different vibe. But that's a that is a classic song, um, you know, and uh, and so I've always always really enjoyed this so yeah for for me this is uh you know it'd be interesting for me to kind of go back you know maybe in hindsight and look and list my top out al rap albums or hip-hop albums but this would certainly be up there uh from the moment that i heard this several you know probably 20 years ago um when i first really heard this record to to now it's it's always it's a very easy go-to if anybody puts it on i'm, I'm all about it so uh, yeah big thumbs up for me can I just add one more bar I love in this that got sure. to bring it in mind? I love, although I hit a pound of herbs, I'm still nice with the verbs, is another <laughs> one that I've always loved from show business. So, yeah. 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 I mean, it's preaching to the choir. It's almost cliche to say that this is one of the best hip hop albums that there is, but it absolutely is for me. Uh, I can almost remember hearing this album for the first time in college and, and, just kind of being blown away by how different it sounded and how immediately I responded to it. I think I knew Q-Tip first from like Breathe and Stop and Vibrant Thing. Those are his singles after or, um, you know, after yeah, this. Like 99 -ish, yeah, like 99-ish, I think, was around. And then, yeah. mm -hmm. and then like once I found out he was in this group, I, you know, I started listening to them. I think that's how I came to it. But the like you said, like both of you said, the fusion of the jazz is really kind of it's amazing how well that works together and also mm -hmm. at this point how unique that sounded and how like unexpected that and it still sounds kind of unique compared to what people are doing today in a lot of ways um the low end theory as the name of the album refers to q-tip's quest to bring in the bass as much as possible and bring in the drums a lot getting to the low end of the songs he kept saying when he was trying to make this album um so i mean and like bugging out is yeah. like the, the, the like testing that theory to the intense level yep so he was always trying to get there uh he credited bob power as well the mixing engineer with being instrumental on this album and kind of helping him achieve the sound he wanted and doing things that like he really didn't think were possible i think um the uh the this what was i gonna say the this is a great fall album by the way i would walk to the mm. library uh walking through the leaves um and with the sun shining and it was just like a great really like vibe um and and felt totally in place with my surroundings yep. um, fall and winter this. yeah yeah i think i agree um I, I agree with you guys i i lost my train of thought but the combination of Q-Tip and Fife Dog, um, their interplay and trading off on not just tracks, but in, in songs as well. I always kind of, Q-Tip has this relaxed vibe, but he's also kind of more cerebral and philosophical. And then Fife Dog's kind of like this more man on the street, kind of blue collar type of person in my mind. And they really complement each other. I feel like Alish Shaheed Muhammad's um, DJing is really kind of subtle but effective in combination with everything else. And I think you just kind of hear Q-Tip's um, uh, background and the fact that he loves record collecting on here and like just the incorporation of things in such a unique way. Oh, to Matt's point about the drum machine, I, all of these are, are samples. Um, so they're not using a drum mm. machine and it's not okay. recorded live, but it's, it is like layered sounds and like stripping out 
um, samples from other things to try and get like just the snares or like looping the looping things to get just like the beats that he was trying to get and stuff so he wasn't wasn't using a drum machine to create okay. create the sounds um uh, uh on verses from the abstract ron carter the jazz bassist actually played live on the track so that was interesting as well i think one of the um, people from the label from jive records which they were on she knew ron carter from another album and she was like we can get him on this album my q-tip was like okay let's do it let's do it <laughs> i didn't think it was possible um the yeah it's just it's just kind of in a class by itself i don't yeah. think you can appreciate you can appreciate this album on its own but having the context like john said of everything that's come before and after puts it in kind of a different league um, it's still unique. I think I like Midnight Marauders a bit more, maybe. So that's high praise in of itself. But this album is like eminently re-listenable re too. Oh, the other thing I was going to mention, Scenario. They Q-Tip and Fife Dog said they have like five or six different versions of that with like multiple different people, like Poss from De La Souls on one version, and they have like all these different people and they couldn't decide which one to put on the album. And I think the single version has different people on it, they said. Mm. And there's other versions that they said are probably buried in some tapes somewhere that they never put out that um that they have or something. So yeah, that's you're right, it is kind of a more classic thing, but I like kind of how they bring in other people from native tongues and um, uh, on that track and kind of highlight other people as well. Um, I just, yeah, it's just great. I like the vibe on this ultimately. I love uh, the listenability of it, the rapping. It's it's all great. So it's, it's a no brainer. And the names are great too. Like the name of the band, the name of the album, the name of the guys, like that they just, <laughs> such, it's just such great word, word play together, you know, mm -hmm. just very, yeah, they're great. Yeah. I love that. They, they bring in like the abstract and then also the concrete at different times, <laughs> like how they, like the, I think of like in rap promoter, it's like, you know, I want chicken and orange juice. That's what's on my rider and my occasional potato by Orida. You know, it's kind of <laughs> like, it's just the first line is like a stretched out bar with the rhyme and the second one's real truncated kind of. And, and so I love how they also, some of their, a lot of their lines are standalone, but then sometimes it runs into two or three lines to continue the story. So I like that you're following that as it goes along. Um, and it seems connected in that way. So, yep, yep. Highest praise from all three of us. It sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was this was a strong. I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I think, Matt, and you're going to be upset at me, Matt. I think the, the like use your illusions m might be three of three in terms the of the albums I listened ones? to this yeah. week because that's how <laughs> yeah. strong this week was. Yeah. Uh, well, the and, other two, and I like the use your illusions a lot. So well, yeah. there's there is there's not really filler on the other two. Right. Yeah, no. It's like it's, it's like use your illusions too good for its own, you know, for its own good. Right. It's too bloated. That's it's it's great. It's also its downfall, too. So um, but I, I I don't take issue with that. I would not go yeah. into a hill to die for, on that. Use your illusion one and two is better than either of these records as a yeah. uh, as a whole. Maybe a real the strongest week, week. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sure was. Maybe the strongest week we've had in terms yeah, well, of uh, totality of, of albums. Mm -hmm. Yep. So credit to the showrunner. On that one, guys. <laughs> yeah, good job. <laughs>